here, what we're going to be doing is how to link to gene problems in genetic maps. We're not talking about sets linked. We're talking about um, genes that are on the same um, autosomal chromosome. So you can see that here. You can see the R, P, A, B, e, and C genes are all on the same autosomal chromosome. And so they have to usually or always occur together. And you're not going to get a question that says, oh, this is a linked gene problem. But it's going to give you the trait. And it's going to say, for instance, uh, cats with black hair usually have green eyes. It's not actually true. But if you saw that, you would know, oh, that's a linked problem. Or perhaps they'll give you a percent. They'll say, um, 49% of the cats with black fur have green eyes. 1% of the cats with black fur have yellow eyes. And 48% of the gray cats have yellow eyes. And 2% of gray cats have green eyes. And so you'd see that, okay, that distribution doesn't make sense. They must be traced that occur together. And those small 1% and 2%, that's because they become unlinked through crossing over. So these are traces that do not show independent assortment. They have to go together because they're stuck together in the same chromosome. So how do we do these problems? Here's our example problem. In centaurs, brown hair is found with pointy ears, whereas light-colored hair is found with non-pointy ears. Brown hair and pointy ears are dominant to light-colored hair and non-pointy ears. What could be the result of a heterozygous brown hair pointy ear centaur having offspring with a light hair non pointy eared centaur? So, your solution you should always have a key would be one point parents one, punnet one, genotype, and phenotype ratio are each one as well. So, I key this ahead of time. So, I have big E equals pointy, little e non pointy big D dark hair, and little d light hair. And then I want to take that extra step in the key, and I would expect you to do it as well, is to show that they're linked. So I put big E on a line with big D, and little e on a line with little d. So to get that point for keying, you must do that. I gave the parents genotypes here, heterozygous for both traits, and then homozygous recessive for non-pointed ears and light hair. So. I don't foil these parents now because big E has to go with big D. I need to keep them together. So this is going to be big E, big D, and little e has to go with little d. So I have to keep those together, little e, little d. So the important point here is to keep the traits that are linked together, and it's as simple as a monohybrid. Little e, little d, little e, little d. And you bring it down. Cross and again keep the two, same two letters together and capital always in front of lowercase. And so our genotype ratio, I can see I have two heterozygous dominants and two homozygous recessive. So it would be two to two, but I'm going to simplify that one to one. And the phenotype is pointy ears and dark hair. And light, uh, non-pointy ears and light hair, and then again, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. The next is genetic maps, and here we're just looking at our percent crossing over, because the farther away two genes are, the more likely it is to break and cross over, just like if I'm trying to break this ruler, right? I can't break it from this close. This far, you can get enough tension. So how do I do this? Well, I always start with the two farthest apart. So I can see here that C and S, 11%. And typically, I would go for the next farthest apart, which would be put the W closer to the C. But I notice here that B is halfway between the two, so 5.5 to each. So I'm going to put B in here. Okay. And you'll see they'll often put these lines down here that show the percent difference. So between C and S, that was 11%. Oops. B and S. That's 5.5% between C and B, another 5.5%. And then I can see that W is cutting across this 5.5. It's a little closer to the B, so let's say a little more than halfway. 
And so here between W and B, that's 2.5%. And then between W and C, that's 3%. And so they could have you map like this and then say, well, what's the difference between W and S? Well, that should be, and we can see 2.5 plus 5.5 is 8%. That works out. So it's just a little bit of a logic, but pretty easy to do. All right. So I hope that was helpful. Um, that's it.